we use an example here as Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So this very simple verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, that he will provide for me. I, I will not be in shortage of anything. And the theme, let God be our shepherd to guide our lives. So now each sermon should have a theme that uh, which aspect of this verse should I, would I uh, want to talk about? I want to say that for each Bible verse, you can have different themes. Now, the theme here is, let God be our shepherd to guide our lives. So this would be uh, uh, a theme from this Bible verse, but I can have other themes. For instance, um, that we, uh, God treasures the pastors who shepherd his flock for Jesus because the Lord is the shepherd and he has many little shepherds, the pastors. So how God wants to use pastors to shepherd his people, not God shepherd us through pastors. So we can talk about uh, pastors role in this role of God being our shepherd. And we also could talk about how we can be a good shepherd or um, about uh, the, how we can enjoy the good shepherd. So we can talk about different aspects. So we have to have a theme and we should repeat this theme when we are preaching. So for the whole message, we want to keep this theme. Let God be our shepherd to guide our lives. Okay, examples, negative and positive examples to let people know that not all Christians accept God as their shepherd. They don't let God shepherd them. So some Christians follow their own desires and not God's guidance. They're not guided by God. They just they guide themselves by their own personal wisdom, by their own with their own personal goals. And then some Christians let God take charge and great things happen in their life. So these are good examples. So this will let people know that not all people would really take the Lord as our shepherd. And it's good to take the Lord as our shepherd. And then God's nature, following the four points we talked about earlier. First, we talked about nature. God is the heart of a good shepherd. He has the nature of caring for us. So God has this nature of a good shepherd. He cares about the sheep. Like, uh, I use an example like personal example like we uh, as parents would care about the children so a shepherd would care about the, the sheep uh, the parents a loving parents the loving parents would not forget about the children they will always care about the children and if anything happens to the children the parents would care very much so that is the heart of a shepherd and and also the parents will guide the children how to grow up well so God is the heart of a good shepherd. He has the nature of caring for us. He cares for us. And then grace that he gives to us personally, he can guide us into the best path. He will guide us to the best path of our life and he can make the best of our lives. He can raise up our lives to a high level that our life will go better and better. And then he can lead us out of evil that he will guide us not to follow the evil way, but he will guide us to follow God's way. Okay, And then grace of transference, that he can make us become good shepherds. So he transferred this gift and ability to us that we can be shepherding other people. And then he will reward us when we shepherd others. others. And so when we shepherd others, God is very happy with us. Okay, so these are the God's nature and grace part. And then why? The reason why we have the why, why some Christians don't let God be the shepherd, so that people know the problem, what hinders them, what stops them from taking God as their shepherd. Because they think that they can take care of themselves and they don't trust God. It's true that many Christians, even after they believe in Jesus, they think, I can take care of myself, I can take care of my life. So I don't really need to follow God in every way. I don't need to obey God in every way. Now, there are Christians, they just want blessings. But when they're asked to let God guide their lives and 
uh, let God uh, be the master, they refuse because they say, I want to follow my own way. And then reminder and warning, we're not following God's guidance as no guarantee and will lead to destruction. So when they follow their own guidance, they have no guarantee of their lives and it will lead to destruction uh, of their life. So how can we let God be our uh, shepherd and guidance? First, remember how God has guided and blessed us. Now, how it depends on our wisdom to how to think of ways how we can help people to take God as our shepherd and our guidance. So th there's no set rule, but we just use our wisdom, how we ourselves take the Lord as our shepherd. So first point is, remember how God has guided and blessed us in our lives, how He has guided us to follow the, the good path of God. And so when we remember how God has blessed us in our lives, then we'll be motivated to follow Him more. And then we think our mistakes and realize that if we don't let God be our shepherd, we will have problems. So what mistakes and what sins we, do we have? And then if we don't let God be our shepherd, then we fall, fall into these sins and we have more problem in our lives. And then pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit and appreciate the voice and obey the voice. Because the Holy Spirit will guide every Every Christian who have a good relationship with God, everyone who has a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit will speak to us. So we need to learn to pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us not to tell lies, not to have lust, not to have anger, and guide us to love other people, to love God, to obey God, to praise God. So we pay attention to this inner voice of the Holy Spirit and obey the voice. Then we are out following God as our shepherd and let God guide us in the direction and details of our lives. So all the details, details of our lives, uh, whom we marry, uh, where we work or where we serve, how we uh, build up the church, how we uh, do evangelism, who do we uh, preach the gospel to, and how we preach our sermon, all this we let God guide us in God's way, not in our own way. Now many people think their moves in the heart are always the moves of the Holy Spirit. It's not necessarily true. Uh, some people will say, I have the move, I, I want to start a new church. It might not be from God, it's just from themselves. So we need to pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then also we can verify with people, is that God's guidance now, of course, it's most important that we receive the, the guidance from God. But sometimes people's opinions, when they pray, are, you know, are good guidance also because it will help us to discern, especially spiritual people. They will help us to discern what is the, the will of God uh, in our lives. Uh, of course, we don't take that to be the, the main uh, uh, you know, the main uh, revelation from people. The main revelation should be the voice of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So sometimes even when people reject what we believe, we still follow God's voice. But very often Christians might not be uh, able to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then they need guidance from other Christians or pastors. So we want to tell people how. So remember how God has guided you and blessed you and with. Uh, so He has blessed you in so many ways, so believe that He's going to guide you more and rethink our mistakes. So in my how, very often I put in how to handle our sins and problems related to that. For instance, if we talk about evangelism, then we want to handle why we don't want to do evan evangelism. When we talk about love for people, why we don't love people, what hinders us from loving people, so how we can take away that hardness of a heart that we don't love people. And then we have, we, uh, have the voice from God and then have a relationship with God and have the motivation to love God. Actually, I can say this. So this few points actually can apply to many sermons also that remember how God has worked in our lives in that area. For instance, evangelism, how God has saved us. 
and how God has used us to do evangelism. So we remember God's work in our lives. And then we think our mistakes, why we don't want to do evangelism. And then pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide us to do evangelism. And then let God guide us in every step of evangelism. So these are four points that you can use. Uh, I, let me apply it to other themes. For instance, love. Love people. So remember how God has used other people to love us, to help us enter God's kingdom, to love us, to care for us. So we remember uh, what God has done to, uh, to that He show His love to us. So remember how God has guided guide us. And then rethink why I cannot uh, love people, why we don't love people as ourselves. And then pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide us to forgive people and be kind to them and, for, and love them. And then let, us, let God guide us to love people, to care for them. So these four points are helpful too. Uh, let me use an, another illustration. For instance, uh, to help people how to forgive. So remember how God has forgiven us so many times and how God's people have forgiven us many times and how those forgiveness really help us. And we think our mistakes, why would it's hard for us to forgive someone? What are the hindrances? Maybe we, are, we hate those people, uh, we don't think of our own sins, we just think of other people's sins, so we realize our problem, and then we can fix it by saying, yes, I have sins too, and they have sins, so I need to forgive them, because God forgive so many of my sins, so I want to forgive other people's sins also. And pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit to forgive other people that uh, He's uh, uh, giving us the guidance. Uh, and then let God guide us. Now, let God guide us. I, we, I can put in this part of to praise God, to love God, so that we can hear God's voice, so that we can be motivated. So you can put in a, a, a fifth point is how to have a close relationship with God to change us to uh, forgive people. So that close relationship with, with God will change us, uh, give us motivation. So this few points, the first point is re think about God's grace in that area to us and then we think our mistakes and sins and and also the third point should be to uh, to praise God to love God to build up a strong relationship with God so we can have motivation and then pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit and then let God guide us to uh, obey God uh, in certain ways, okay? So these are ways that we can uh, talk about how. Uh, let me use another illustration, like how to, um, how to build up the church. So remember how God has built up the church in the past, how He has built up our spiritual lives and the spiritual lives of other people. And then we think our mistakes, how we did not care about the church how we have hurt the church and then have a close relationship with God and also have the people of God praise God and love God together that's third point so I can add this third point and then fourth point pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit how to build up the church and then let God guide us in the direction of the, of the building up the church mm -hmm. 